I just got this notification on my phone and I just about had a heart attack. You see, for the past month, I've been competing in the race of the century. Now this all started because of one comment left on my last video. Hey bro, why don't you make a Marlin lure before Marling Bates makes one? Little did Sergio know, his comment would follow me for the next month. It was everywhere. And while I was laying on the ground doing nothing, Marlin Bates was hard at work making a bait. They came this close to being a swordfish. Luckily for us, it was a gar. Yeah, and I can't let him win in a race that he doesn't even know he's competing in. So that's why I have this picture of this sweet blue Marlin. And today we're going to be making a Marlin bait before Marlin baits. And let's get right onto the bait making. Let's cut this piece of paper out. So the fins are going to be plastic, so we got to cut those off. That looks good enough. Bam, that's going to go right there. And we just glue this bad boy on. We just slap that on right there and we'll cut it out and call it good. So I made a ball kind of around the tail to make that a little bit sturdier and I made the, the nose part a bit thicker because I have a feeling we're going to have some durability problems with the nose. So I made it a bit thicker than the actual picture. All right, we're going to get right onto sanding. We kind of want, I kind of want a ball at the end of the tail that might help the action a little bit. About sanded off our reference. That would have been bad. So we still need to carve some gills on here. So shape's coming together pretty well. Now we're gonna cut out the fins real quick because I think I just want the fins to get a like an idea where I want the joints. I think three pieces will be good, but I think we're gonna have to cut one of these fins in half so we have a two part. That way we can have three joints. So let's cut these fins out. You know, actually, if I want a straight edge, what I'll do is I'll have this like that. Yeah, that makes sense. That way I have a flat bottom. Yeah, look at us, we're getting all smart over here. Now, same way with this one. Yeah, look at that. So I just finished cutting out the fins. And here's how they look. Cut out some slots on here. And that's our next step. So the tail piece just goes like this. Fits right in there. And now I'm gonna cut a slot along the top. I already have it marked right where this one will go on. And it'll be kind of set back a little bit like this, a little bit of a lip to kind of hold down in there. So in terms of joints for this lure, I'm kind of burned out on doing a pin and eyelet joint like these ones. So I haven't done joints like these in forever, but I kind of want to do some angled joints and then I'll make the eyelets go together. So cut this out on the bandsaw real quick. We're not gonna cut all the way through but we gotta cut most of the way through. We're gonna have to cut that down a little bit more. I'm gonna do this by hand, no longer the drum. We can see where I screwed up, but we're gonna fill this in with baking soda and, and uh, super glue, so it doesn't matter. I've cut it out a little bit deeper, and now we can get this in here pretty easily. So if we're gonna want this bait to join, we're gonna have to cut this lip about right there and then we're gonna have to fit this piece in here so I'm just gonna do this on the bottom take this out and right there's where I'm cutting
Oh! <laughs> Dang. <laughs> yep. Cool. Look at this. Look at that. That is nice. And if we take one more piece, bam, we got a nice little marlin going on, a nice little swordfish. I am pretty happy with the way this came out. I'm not gonna glue these in just yet. I think I need to carve the face on this thing. That way I can just pop this off, get a better grip on the lure. So if I'm gonna carve a face on this lure, I need to go to a different part of the shop. That way I can sit down, concentrate on this. So, we're over at where I paint. Lighting wise, it's not the best over here, but it's what we'll have to do for right now. So just getting my carving knives ready, getting my pens ready. Gotta grab the picture of the thing so I can get started. I feel like up until this point, this bait has been kind of goofy looking, but now that we have the gills on, I think it looks a lot better. And the sword nose looks a lot more serious and a lot less goofy because it looked kind of chubby, which it's got to be thick, otherwise it's going to break off. We have two holes in here, so I'm going to show you guys this nice little trick you can do. Okay, so one way I figured out how to line up the holes perfectly, you take a piece of pencil lead and you measure it out, and you break it right there. Put it back down in the hole and then you line up your bait this it should leave a little mark about yeah left a little mark about right here and that's where we'll drill so, nice now our holes are perfectly lined up so it's like uh it's like one in the morning i just did a little off-camera gluing but look at this thing. It's awesome. It's so cool. I have to put lead in the bottom, but I've got this whole thing sealed. The lip, the plastic isn't really glued in. It's just snugly fit in. And so we'll glue it in. We'll have to take it all apart to paint it. To tell, look, look at how far it can go. I feel like it's gonna have a great action. So just looking at this lure, I can already tell we're gonna need a lip for this thing. We have lead. But I have a feeling this thing's not going to go down, especially with the funky shape we got going on here. And I have no clue how these fins will affect it. So we're going to add a lip. We're going to put it about right here. Eh, well, good enough. Oh, geez, geez. Whew, that was almost bad. So I have this pre-made lip with my logo on it. And I could just stick it in here. Oh, maybe I will just stick it in there. Maybe we don't have to cut one out. Maybe we could just live with that. But let's go test this out. All right, we're out at the testing pond. Well, I guess we're out at the testing pool with the swordfish bait and uh, it works. So uh, look at this, watch this. Here it is. See the action right there. Oh no, the tail's about to fall off. I don't have it super glued well together because I need to take this apart to paint, but it works and it's taken me forever. I had to drill holes on the sides to add more weight because there's only so much weight you can add to the bottom. I'm going to glue this lip in 100%, gonna take all these fins on the top out, we're gonna fill in all these holes and we're gonna get ready to paint this thing. Fins are done. <laughs> oh, look at that that's cool so bait's pretty much done next step before we do it is I want to foil it that way it's nice and shiny like an actual marlin and I want to listen to music so bam foiled got some tape on here I don't have any masking tape so we're using electrical tape I'm really hoping uh, I can spray clear coat on this without anything going wrong. So we got the bait foiled, so let's go over to the painting booth and let's get started painting. So for the paint scheme of this bait, we're pretty much going to keep with the original picture I had from the beginning. So it's going to be blue on the top, 
a little bit of yellow and a little bit of black in the middle and then there's gonna be silver parallel stripes down which I have those masked off with that little bit of uh, electrical tape after I painted the yellow I just used a little piece of foil to kind of block off the black paint I use that kind of as a stencil that way I could just get like a straight lateral line along the bait once I peeled it off it was a little bit too silver so I added some blue to the top and that pretty much finished off the bait all right so I just finished the so I just finished painting the baits. Here's the swordfish. It looks awesome. Let me give you guys a better look. Boom. So here's the finished marlin. It looks pretty good. I added a little bit of color shift red to the top of the fins and then on the bottom of the belly. Because on the reference it had a little bit of color shift red on it so I figured that looked nice. I uh, faded some blue along the silver because it was a little jarring having that much silver. It looks a lot more natural now. And there are some color shift blue little ribs along the belly. Those will come out better once I have clear-coated it. And now we need to put on an eye on this bait. So I have a couple small dead meat customized. Um, I'm going to pick one that suits this bait best. Because, I don't know, swordfish eyes are kind of squinty. So from all these eyes, I chose this blue one right here. I... Alright, time to dip the bait in. Try not to get too much clear coat on the lip. Oh, ho, ho, ho. nice. Guys, I just finished the bait. Let's take it outside. All right, so we're outside. So before we test the lure, let's see how she looks. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple seconds. Glorious B-roll. I think we've gotten a good enough look at the bait. Let's see how she swims. All right, let's test this bait out. Now, this is the first time I've seen this bait swim since it was just straight wood, so the action might have changed a little bit, and I'm really hoping it doesn't. Oh, hey, it swims pretty good. Well, I think we completed the challenge of this video. We got the Marlin bait made before Marlin baits made one, so that's a win in my book. I was able to get some cool underwater shots with this thing. That was fun to do. I did throw it around a little bit, trying to catch some fish, but no luck on this. But it was super fun to make. Uh, please comment any uh, video ideas you guys have for the next bait. Yeah, so we're going to send this one out to Marlin baits and see what he thinks about it.